let us start a new topic called regional economic integration and in order to understand this keep two things in mind number one consider the following we live in the US and I live in a state called Kansas which is surrounded by other states like Oklahoma, Missouri, Arkansas and so on and suppose of instead of having these independent states we had independent countries like the country of Kansas, country of Oklahoma and so on and whenever you move across countries you need documents like passport and visa to move from one place to another. Another thing is when you buy stuff from other countries you have to go through what is called customs clearance. So keep this in mind in order to understand this topic called regional economic integration. Now after World War II what people realized are the benefits of trade liberalization or reducing the trade barriers if not eliminating them. So earlier under the auspices of GATT and now called WTO different countries have liberalized trade or have reduced trade barriers as far as they relate to foreign trade. At the same time some of these countries they started forming what are called economic alliances where they would further reduce trade barriers amongst the member nations and we are looking at this aspect and most of these alliances were formed by neighboring countries and hence this is topic is called regional economic integration. So starting from a position of different countries having trade barriers or economic barriers in general they decide to lower these barriers or in essentially what they are trying to do is start a process of economic integration. So what is economic integration? It refers to countries joining together where there are economic benefits of being a member and as you go through this process of economic integration the degree of integration varies and there are different examples of varying degrees of in economic integration and let us look at some definitions. The first one is called preferential trade arrangement and this is to provide lower barriers to trade amongst participating nations than on trade with non-members. For example, British Commonwealth preference scheme is an example of preferential trade arrangement and this was started by the UK with the members of its former colonies. So countries like India, Australia, Canada will have special trade ties with the UK where their exports and imports face lower trade barriers relative to rest of the world. Another definition, free trade area. This is a form of economic integration wherein all trade barriers are removed amongst members. So all trade barriers are removed among members but each member nation retains its right to own barriers to trade with non-members. For example, European Free Trade Area and NAFTA, North American Free Trade Area. Now NAFTA is an alliance between US, Canada and Mexico and if it was just a free trade area all the trade barriers between Canada, US and Mexico have been eliminated but if it is just a free trade area each member nation had a right to impose its own trade barriers with rest of the world. So Mexico could have different taxes relative to the US if there were exports coming from China, India and so on. But free trade area suffers from one problem. Suppose Mexico has a special tie with say China where Chinese exports pay a lower taxes when they enter Mexico but US has higher taxes on 
imports coming from China. So what Chinese businesses could do in principle is they could export their goods to Mexico where they pay lower taxes and since we have a trade agreement between Mexico, US and Canada, these goods can enter without any problems into the US market. So this creates a lot of problem of what we call diverting trade through third markets. So free trade area is the next step in economic integration. Whatever problems we face uh, under free trade area, in a way they are eliminated under what is called customs union. So what is customs union? It is free trade area, so all trade barriers among members have been removed. And at the same time, member nations decide to set up common external tariff. The example that I gave under free trade area of trade diversion coming through third countries, all that is eliminated if Mexico, US and Canada have the same set of tariff with non-member countries. So when we have common external tariffs, what members do is they will harmonize their trade policies towards non-members. So NAFTA could be an example. Earlier, European Economic Community, which was a precursor of the European Union, they came up with customs union. Another definition is the common market and all these definitions are based on the degrees of integration. So common market is customs union and at the same time you permit free movement of labor and capital amongst members. So it's not just free movement of goods amongst members but workers could also work in different par different member nations within a particular alliance and this is called common market and the same thing uh, as it applies to labor it also applies to capital as well so a British uh, business if it wanted it could uh, put up capital in France without any problem and the French could do the same in the UK and the European Union attained the status of common market in 1993 where we have a common market, so customs union plus free l movement of labor and capital among members. In 2016, you must have heard of Brexit and, and that is the Britain exiting the European Union. And one of the reasons for that has been the issue relating to free movement of labor and this is what the British felt and that is that permitting migration from different parts of the European Union to the UK has created a lot of problems with respect to employment, unemployment of the British people but we'll get to this point sometime later. <coughs> the next step in terms of economic integration is called economic union and economic union is a step ahead or further from the common market and so along with common market what these countries do is they will unify or harmonize their monetary and fiscal policy. Monetary policy has to do with the supply of money, rate of interest and so on. Fiscal policy has to do with government expenditures and taxes. So different members nations will try to harmonize their monetary and fiscal policies and what this can result in is an issuance of a common currency and we have seen the introduction of euro in the European Union and so Benelux also did the same it's Belgium, Netherlands and Luxembourg have an economic union if you look at a country which is which has say states which is divided into different states for example the US there are 50 states not 50 countries and so US is a complete example com is an example of complete economic and monetary union all of us living in different parts of the US use the same currency 
So different definitions relating to, to economic integration.